One of them are great. Um, I really think, and it's my opinion, Hodgkin's have a better prognosis. Lymphomas, all of them are not good because they're, they're tumors in the lymph system that begin to press against nerves and, and press against vital organs. And that's their problem. They just get bigger and have to be removed. They usually divide them into four stages. I think it's kind of interesting to know. You don't have to necessarily for a test, but stage one is um, you find a node, uh, one node in the lymphatic system, wherever. Stage two, uh, more than one node on the same side of the body, upper or lower. They're, I found two nodes and they're both upper. Stage three is uh, nodes are on both sides, but they're not big and they're not many. I don't know what not big and not many mean, but that's what. Stage four, there are nodes everywhere, tumors everywhere. And now we're to disorders of the pla of platelets. And um, People are considered, you know normal platelets, I think we said 100,000 uh, to 450,000 or something like that, 100,000, 400, in those ballparks of 400,000, uh, starting at 100,000. Anything under 100,000, somebody is considered thrombocytopenic, they're low, low platelets. And if they're, they're high risk for bleeding, they bumped up to somebody and bled or accidentally cut and bled. Uh, high risk for bleeding are at 50,000 or lower. And spontaneously bleeding, when you just start bleeding, you're just sitting here listening to me and you start bleeding either in the head or your body and you're bleeding, that can happen from 20,000 or lower. And I don't know whether you all have noticed, sometimes the orders will say anything under 10,000 going in transfuse platelets. And in CDM, I'm going to go over the hanging of platelets in blood. Um, you already know they last, like uh, platelets last 10 days. If you're transfused, only 24 hours. Now, some of our problems are, again, hemophilia hemophilia, you're lacking two of those 13 clotting factors. And uh, you don't need to even, it's clotting factor eight and nine, but you don't need to know that. Uh, it's sex linked, women carry it, but it mostly affects men and uh, males. And um, it bleeds in the joint, so it's loaded with pain. Hemophilia is heavy bleeding in the joints, loaded with pain. Von, V-O-N, Willebrand is another problem with platelets, and it's the, uh, they are only missing number eight. You don't need to remember what one they're missing, but it is only one clotting factor is missing. And they don't bleed in their joints. And uh, they have bruising, and they have hematomas, nosebleeds, heavy menstruation for women, but uh, it's very livable. The next one is ITP, idiopathic, idio, I-D-I-O-pathic, thrombocytopenia purpura. So idiopathic um, is, they don't know where it comes from, thrombocytopenia low purpura. Do you know purpura is kind of, uh, bleeding that goes together and looks like a birthmark. So they may have petechiae so close and um, together that the bleeding goes together to look like a birthmark. The, w, the platelets are below 100,000 and what it is is an autoimmune problem. It's the craziest thing somebody wakes up, it's a lot among young college people uh, of that age, and people think it's the flu. They wake up not feeling good. Yeah, I've noticed I have a few bruises, but I was hit 
you know, somebody came up and did that to me. They justify it. But then they wake up one day really feeling bad. So they go to the college infirmary or wherever. They do blood work and realize that um, platelets are real low. You know, the first scare is leukemia. Let me stop to say, why? Leukemia is high white. We're not talking about platelets. Well, if your bone marrow, follow me, if your bone marrow is pouring out white, it's not pouring out platelets in red. So leukemics, a lot of times, go to the doctor because they're anemic, they're tired, and they're bruising. Well, because their red is down and their platelets are down, not because they're diseased, the bone marrow isn't putting it out because it's so busy putting out white. So when anybody goes in with bruising, the, the office, doctor's office is usually worried until they get that blood work back on ITP and the blood work shows platelets are low, okay, but white and red are normal. And it's, everybody leaves, does a sigh of relief because that means it's a thrombocytopenic problem and probably an autoimmune. And the craziest thing is that it'll leave as crazy as it came. They do treat it. Um, they may give steroids. Do you recall on your in your briefs, it has steroids and it says coats uh, platelets. Um, steroids will coat platelets. Physicians may or may not give the patient steroids. And, and just, a, just an elementary way of saying it is that that steroid covers the platelet that has an antibody on it. What happens, stop and say, somebody wakes up one morning and the body says, my goodness, I don't think those platelets belong to me. They don't look like what I used to have and makes an antibody for it. And that's as crazy as autoimmune is. Autoimmune is just that crazy. One morning you wake up and the body doesn't think it recognizes something and starts fighting its own cell. And so it makes an antibody to kill the platelet. But that antibody doesn't kill the platelet. The platelet still does fine until it goes through the spleen. And you remember from anatomy and physiology, the spleen, besides making us some cells, it's real good color or a filter or pulling bad things out and crushing them and keeping them and letting the good pass through. So when that monstrosity passes through the spleen, the spleen says, my goodness, that's an odd looking thing, I'm gonna kill it. It kills it. The spleen gets bigger and bigger and bigger because of all the old cells, which is exactly what happens in leukemics when that white cell is coming through that doesn't look right, it kills it. And one of the symptoms when anybody's got leukemia is they have a huge spleen because the destroyed white cells are in there. Can't keep up with it, of course. Anyway, so back to the platelet, and I know I'm going back and forth, but it's the comparison. So here's the platelet. Sometimes steroids given will cover it. I tell it kind of greases it, and they can get past the spleen because there's nothing wrong with the platelet. It's just that it's carrying a worthless antibody. Now the physician might do that, doesn't keep them on steroids for about six weeks because you know, constant steroids are a little hard on us. So, um, 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 it might can kill them. If it doesn't, they may give them uh, an antibody. I want you to realize antibodies come in IV solutions as IgG, IgA, Ig. They're a big I, capital, lowercase g, and then a capital G, maybe. They're different antibodies that we can be given IV, and they'll give an antibody hoping that antibody they're given IV will kill that ridiculous antibody riding the platelets. So we've got steroids that might can help ITP. We've got antibodies IV. And then um, they may have to do a splenectomy just to get the spleen out so the spleen won't keep killing the platelets. And it leaves the body, it quits. 
as autoimmunes will do if they don't kill you first, autoimmunes wake up one day and say, oh, I made a mistake. I do recognize this platelet, and they quit doing what they were doing. Um, I do want to mention one that's real odd. It's real, um, it's rare, I should say. TTP, TTP, thrombo, thrombocytopenia purpura. And it is just, again, kind of an autoimmune. All of a sudden, the body starts clumping their, their thrombus the, at the capillaries uh, and the, and the um, arteries. They just kind of clump together and platelets clump. And when they do that, our circulating good thrombus are not up to 100,000 to 100,000. Um, the treatment for that is anti anticoagulants. But TTP, you don't see it very often. Sometimes it's confused with ITP because they both show low platelets and regular uh, red and white. And you know it's a thrombocytopenia purpura and they're bruising. But uh, we've had patients, they first say are ITP, and then when they get here and see the microscopic uh, platelets clumping, they know it's TTP. The last platelet problem is DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. And that, um, you look in your book, but let me tell you about it first and just listen. They don't know why it starts. It's not called an autoimmune, it's just called crazy. And it just, they don't know why it happens. Disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. And um, the best way I can describe to you is it's the body with clotting and, and bleeding going on at the same time. Not at the same place, different places, clotting, bleeding, going on at the same time in the body. Now, is that crazy? They don't know when it's going to happen or why it's going to happen. And I'll talk to you about a couple of examples when we go to class. But um, I, I made this example up myself. If I hadn't really been among the Amish people, but I've seen movies and read books, and I, what they say is they all live in the community, and when there's a fire or a, something happening way over on that farm, they ring a bell. And all the able-bodied men drop their pitchforks or whatever they're doing and rush to that farm to help and leave the women and children at home. And then they get up there and every man in the area is there. They're all over each other, falling on each other. Every, it's, it's craziness. But nobody's back home and the wolves attack the children and there's no protection at home. And so in the body, what happens, one crazy time, something happens in the body. And it could be an injury, a trauma, or it could be the gram negative rods. But something happens that everything worth anything to stop it, except go to that area and leave the rest of the body unprotected. And so they're clotting at the area because they're all over each other, in each other's way, stomping on each other, sticking to each other. So we got clotting there, we got bleeding someplace else. Nobody knows why it happens, it just happens. And I'll give you some examples of it uh, in class when we talk about it. But in essence, it's bleeding and clotting going on at the same time. You think, which would we, would we uh, treat first? Well, they get heparin in you or an anticoagulant. There's also, your book mentions APC, which is activated protein C. And um, um, so an anticoagulant and, of course, blood replacement if you're losing blood. If you're, it's a trauma that brings on. Um, but it may be um, a gram-negative rod, and they give an anticoagulant plus something to fight the rod. DIC, we'll talk more about it. Now, 
what's left to talk about 